electronic steering. CF Moto 500 HO electronic steering. Man, this thing is slick. We're going to be diagnosing why the cooling fan is coming on, or basically why it's overheating. Of course, it's got reverse, which is awesome. Looking really good. Straight on back. Looking good, looking good. Man, look at that beast. Woo, man, look at that incline. Woo. Yeah. Is it in low gear? I can hear it. It's in reverse. Oh, wow, yeah. So I just took it out of. Uh, in park now. I just took it out of four-wheel drive. Wow. Look at this thing, guys. This thing's a beast. Oh, yeah. It's 2015. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> it works. Parking brake. That sharp-looking rig. Man. All right, y'all, we're do a little test drive here. Why don't you put it in high, go down there, turn around and come back, because it's, it's going to overheat soon. Yes, yeah. that's why I've got it. Here, wait, buddy, wait. Let's make sure it's in two-wheel drive. All right, cool. This is the four-wheel drive button. Over there, really quick, and turn around. Turn around behind the uh, over there. Oh, yeah, CF Moto. You can go in there, go in a little bit, and turn around. You've got reverse. You've got reverse. To reverse. There you go. <laughs> nice. Beast. Not bad. Oops, excuse me guys. <laughs> what do you think? Nice. How's it do? Alright, I'm stopping. What was that? It's like two switch. Huh. Alright. Yeah, I thought you had to turn it all the way as well. Not very much.
that up. Yeah. Up and down the stream? Yeah, um, let's make sure this guy doesn't go straight, but don't go down this far. I just want you to stay within here, but have enough to where you can floor it. Yeah. Just don't get caught. All right, let's start the video over. <laughs> Just loving that. Oh man, come on, don't go that far. As people are walking out of the church. Oh my goodness. Should have a helmet on him, of course. <laughs> All right, let's go park it. In our test drive. Yeah. Be real nice and slow. think of the speed it's it, it definitely when I uh, went that way it, yeah. it almost felt like it was gonna take off the ground <laughs> no that's pretty I'm, I'm impressed. We're going 26 miles an hour it's on a four-wheeler with no roof so it does seem fast. I'm very impressed with it all right y'all working on a 2015 CF moto um, CF 500 AU 6L I honestly don't have any idea what the AU I guess maybe all utility 6L I don't know don't know much about these. I think they're from made in China. Um, this one's got a two-seater. It's belt driven. It's pretty peppy. You got a CVT tech, it says. I'm just going off of what my dad told me. This is his. And the issue we're trying to diagnose, or we're going to diagnose, is the fan is not coming on and it's overheating. Well, it's overheating. Dad noticed the fan isn't coming on. I haven't taken it that far, but of course I trust what he says. So I'm gonna go from that point and basically, uh, number one, make sure the fan motor works. Put 12 volts to it. I probably could do that somehow, some way with the relays or the uh, up here, up top here, because this is a fan relay, but I don't have any uh, information on it. So my idea is to first remove these four, looks like 12 millimeter bolts and get this off of the way out of the way then hopefully oof, hopefully have access somehow hopefully this lifts up i might do a little more research tonight before i dig into it because i don't want to waste my time but you can see that the lower part of this is, is bolted there that's fine the bumper bumpers bolted the winch a lot of stuff going on here so um, I'm going to do some of our research because I do not want to open up a can of worms in this thing. But it should be pretty simple though. I just got to figure out the tricks of the trade. And uh, there's not a lot of room. Maybe I can remove some of these inner panels. I think they're actually riveted. But I mean everything's really covered up. So I got to figure out how to access everything. Um, but. That's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna plug away here. We get the Corvette hanging out. Got her inside. Um, she spent the winter outside. Well, last couple months of the winter outside. Um, the old plow truck needs to get in to uh, local plow service and uh, get um, let me get a second opinion on what's going on with the plow left right. And then, of course, I just showed you the old Weber, the 22, ready to get her done. Uh, probably do some stakes later. And uh, got a couple fires this season. You can see our evening. It's just gorgeous up here in Alaska. Thankful and grateful for being able to have a water, food, shelter, and so much more. But I uh, hope you all are doing well out where, wherever you're at. I got to get this thing figured out. This thing's pretty peppy too. It, it, it goes. And the rear end looks like the front end 
in a way. If it had white lights, it would look like a front end. Um, it just looks like a double-sided thing, I guess. It's kind of weird. All right, guys, let's dig into this thing. What do you think of this thing, bud? It's pretty cool, but it seems like I think they have some quirks that you gotta watch out for. But uh, but to get to here, I gotta take the seat and the fuel tank off, and then I can get get up into the uh, cooling fan. And figure this thing out. So. There's Mr. Lucas, and then of course behind him we got the XL and the XR, waiting for their turn. Over now. All right, guys, we got the uh, cowling that covers the fuel tank off. Let me get the uh, cap back on there. Next, we got to uh, remove these side panels and then basically unbolt the fuel tank. And then I'm hoping we'll be able to access it at that point. I printed off instructions. I got them inside. There's a service manual that is available online. I can uh, find the link for you if you need it. I'll try to, I'll try to remember to post it below. But we're diving into this thing. Um, of course, this just came out with some uh, some plastic clips, um, and you just use a tool like this or something similar to kind of get in there. Get her done. I should disconnect the negative terminal of the battery if I was doing things properly. Let's try to figure out. I don't even know how this works. Yeah, I'll probably do that. CF mode two. All right, guys, I got this panel off. It's gonna be a screw there, a couple of bolts here. There's a cover you gotta take off. There's a bolt there. Um, whatever that was, it's a, a fastener and a bolt there. This should come. Whoops. Careful, this thing. Weak link right there. Good job for that. All right, guys, we're getting this thing uncovered. Let's do our battery really quick. Well, I don't need to do that quite yet. All right. Um, as you can see, the fuel tank. Whoa. Yeah, this one's really Whoa. A little tighter than I anticipated. <laughs> this isn't the best uh, bit for that. All right. My fuel tank bolt there. All right, let's go do the other side. And then I'm hoping I can access what we need to access. This is a simple way to kind of crack it open. I need to consult my instructions here so I don't do too, I don't get too far. But I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. And the other side on this part, I the bracket dropped out, so watch out for that. I'll lose the bracket. Okay, let's me switch out to the screwdriver. Sorry for the terrible video. I meant to do a GoPro for this, but I'm just kind of in the mode and just getting it done. Okay. Go over here. Get my tool. Okay, and then this one we got more to deal with because of the shift thing. All right, that. Let's get this. Oops. Come on. 
careful not to lose that down the hatch. Didn't look too far. Okay. Okay. Well, that probably unscrews. Um. Yeah, it's definitely gonna unscrew. There's a hex on this handle. to unscrew that and then I got this this that there and then this should come off so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a wrench to get that handle off all right guys this thing is just a stopper nut I basically tried to unscrew the whole damn thing basically you just you just got to grab this and then you have to turn the knob or of course in fact uh, turn this this way and just loosen it so anyways that was retarded um, I was trying to basically I was thinking this was integral with that and it's not at all so anyway I still haven't looked at the instructions I printed out but it's pretty self-explanatory right here Something's going on. Sorry for the sirens out there. All right, now let's see what I've done here besides. No, oh, duh. Okay. There we go. Oh, hey there. Couldn't quit the fight. Ooh, that's hot. All right. There we go. That popped off. We got something else. We got a uh, screw. What the? F Looking at this down there. That's. Those are causing this not to come off so I'm gonna hold maybe I didn't even need to do that I have no idea I need to go look at these instructions they're printed out but no matter what I still I mean I'm way far away from getting to the fan so cheapers this thing CF moto complex moto <laughs> all right y'all it's been a while uh, we are back on this four-wheeler can't remember what the hell it's called <laughs> It's a uh, CF Moto C Force 500 HO. It's got the CF 500 AU 6 L. He's notorious for the uh, overheating problems, and I think our issue is going to be our sensor here. But what I wanted to do, of course, I have this disconnected, is go here to the fan relay and just make sure the fan actually works. Um, got our power there. This is going to jump out to the fan, and these are our uh, signal wires. And in fact, what happens is power, power, when the, um, I believe, when the um, coolant temperature sensor gets switched on and allows power through, power shows up here and then collapses the relay and then sends power out here. So let's try it. As you can hear, the fan is running, so we know the circuit is good. And so I'm going to guarantee that the issue is our, our switch here. Um, we've got a new switch. We've got a waterproof fan that uh, my dad wants me to put in. And then what I can do is we're going to take the switch out, put it in um, water that's like boiling and look at the uh, switch move. Make sure we've got, you know, continuity or we're not gonna get continuity because it's, the switch isn't working. It might be failing at the wrong temp and it might, you know, it may collapse way up above boiling, but it probably, it's probably just bad, so. So we've got our diagnosis kind of completed. We do have our parts. Dad ordered these off of Amazon. We've got a new fan, waterproof, we've got a, wiring kit that allows 
you to switch the fan on when you want to, on and off. And then a new um, um, temperature switch, which looks good. So we're gonna try and salvage the coolant. We're gonna make a little cardboard. Uh, we're gonna clean all this up, make a cardboard funnel to catch all the coolant. We'll see if we can, obviously if it, and if we, if we need to, we can filter it through some coffee filters, which would be okay. But um, the coolant in this thing is like brand new. So we're gonna try and, and save it. So let's get to work. That took way too much apart. I didn't, I didn't need to take this. Well, this is kind of convenient, maybe. Nah, not at all. There's a, uh, the fan connection, connection is somewhere that I have to find still. But anyways, we're doing pretty good. Let's get her done. All right, ladies and gents, I've got the new sensor in. What I did is I made a, uh, out of aluminum foil, I made kind of a little gutter system. So I could, what I did is I just, Remove the old sensor almost all the way just for enough for its fluid to just kind of stream out. It all went down my little uh, my little aluminum foil gutter into here. Of course, there's a little bit of debris just from whatever uh, flaking off of the vehicle. Whoops, the filter here is submerged. What I'm doing is I'm just dumping it through a uh, coffee filter. I need a new one apparently. So let me hang this up and get get some going here. Basically, just streaming, uh, straining. Oh, we have to hold it here. Straining the uh, coolant through filter. I'm gonna dump it back in there. Got everything hooked up. I can, I can test that. But I'm just gonna go with the new sensor for now. It still doesn't work. We got some other issue, but this should work just fine with the way we tested it. So. Anyways, we're going to dump this in and basically let it sit to make sure that the new sensor had an O-ring seal. This old one had a rubber gasket seal. So it seemed to, the O-ring seemed to work just fine, but obviously I'm a little bit skeptical. So I just want to make sure it actually seals up before we get too far. And then um, that's pretty much it. We'll get all the body. Once we verify that the fan is coming on, it's not overheating. Got all the covers put back on it and this thing will be ready to go. All right, y'all, got all the coolant filtered. It worked out. I'm sure there'll be a couple bubbles and uh, top it off a little bit. I'll, I'll use the hydrometer and make sure that uh, the, uh, you know, the freeze point's correct. Let's probably be able to add just a little bit of water to top it off. Um, let's take a look at our sensor. All right, no drips at all, it's a great sign. So I'm basically ready to start it up. I've got my uh, my uh, temp sensor hooked up. I got my fan hooked up. Everything else that's disconnected is just body panels. So let's uh, get on up here. Okay. Let's try to equalize that so it's a little bit, there you go. Run it at idle until it gets up to temp, and we will see if this fan comes on. So stay tuned. I was gonna put the wheel back on and roll it out because it's obviously stinking up the uh, garage. But I got my exhaust tube. It's not quite long enough, but the way this thing angles out is just down and this way. So hopefully this allows me to still do some stuff without the garage getting all stinky or of course the odorless gas carbon monoxide and I can start getting a headache. My next job is to get the uh, Honda ready for our camping trip. Three-wheeler. I've not been able to find a, uh, a replacement cap so I'm actually very disappointed. I'm gonna have to probably get a uh, a new fuel tank, and I still don't quite know why it's so. I, just don't, I don't understand why. It, I mean, fuel comes out through this 
like as if there was no fuel cap. It sloshes out. And the seal looks like it seals. It goes on there, maybe. Maybe, um. The way it feels. You know what? I bet you it's that damn thing. I, I think I'm feeling the tension of this instead of, uh this so maybe I can just get a new seal yeah I'm almost gonna bet that's my fix <laughs> actually this is embarrassing all right we'll check it out thank you there she is I'm gonna wrap it up a little bit just to help it kind of get worked up so far um, the coolant temp sensor is sealing lower hose oh yeah oh yeah I think at the fourth or fifth bar it's supposed to come on. Oh, it's on! Ha! Yes! There she is, folks. There she is. We have a fix. Let's get these panels back on. I'm gonna let it run some more. Let's make sure it, it, it uh, doesn't misbehave. So there you go. Wow. Awesome. Coolant temp sensor. Over now. Here, let me film this. From the old CF Moto CF500 AU6L. ABCD AFG EPS. <laughs> I mean, can they put more things on there? Alright, guys. I'm gonna wrap this project up and move on to the next. Alright, Dad, we're on three, three bars. The uh, temp's about 185, and we have fans coming on and off right now. Working good though. Everything's everything's staying right at right between 180 and 190. So everything's looking good. Dad, yeah, I'll button this thing up. Let's wait for it to come back on here. Cycling just about 
just right. And it's not gone above this third bar at all. So it's, it's, it's doing really good. We're good to go, Dad.